This is how you add a puzzle effect to a photo using actions in Photoshop. All right, so the first thing we need is our Photoshop action for the puzzle pieces. So I have this link linked in the description below. Click on that. It's going to take you to this page. Then simply click on this free to be able to download it. If you get this message up here, just click open. That's going to take you into Adobe Creative Cloud. So obviously make sure you're logged in. And this just makes sure to let you know that it's developed by a third party developer. Just click OK. Once it's installed, just go over to your downloads folder. So mine's right here and you'll see this puzzle pieces free. Double click on that and then you're going to have to unzip it. I'm just using this free one of express zip file compression. I'm going to go extract and then it's going to open output folder right here. And that just on my desktop, I just have in assets. Now I have puzzle pieces. And if I double click in there, you're going to see this ATN file right there. So now when I go to Photoshop and I go into my actions, so if you don't see actions, go up to window and then down to actions right here. It's going to be this play button right there. You might see the default actions right here. I'm just going to close that down. Go up to this little hamburger thing, click on that, go load actions, and then you're going to find it. So I'm going to go back to my desktop, into assets, puzzle pieces, and that ATN file right there. Once this opens, you're going to get all the different piece options in here, the dimensions. So for example, this one's 15 by 10, which makes the 150 pieces and the aspect ratio that goes with it. But before we continue, we have to make sure that our image matches with the aspect ratio that we want. So I'm probably just going to stick with this three by two aspect ratio. And then you're going to pick one of these options. I'm going to go with 54 pieces. But obviously, the more pieces you pick, the smaller the pieces are going to be and the less pieces, the bigger they're going to be. So since I'm going with 54 pieces and three by two, I need to click on my layer. Actually, I'm going to hide this for a second. I'm going to click on my layer. Then I'm going to hit C. That'll bring up the crop tool. You're going to make sure in here you type in the proper aspect ratio. So mine is three to two right here. And then you can crop this. So if I click the corner, I can now maneuver this. So if you if you want the whole image, that's fine. You can keep it there. Or you can start cropping this down and moving your image into place. So I think I'm going to crop her out a little bit, make her face a little bit bigger, and get rid of all the extra bits that are on the outside. Then just click check. Then open your actions back up click on the amount of pieces that you want under the proper aspect ratio. So I'm going to go 54 and then simply just go down here to this play button and click it. That's going to go through the puzzle pieces and then this little menu is going to come up. So adjust bevel uh, and shadow in the top left. So it's going to be up here. Just click continue and you're going to get a little preview up here and you can adjust bevel and emboss and drop shadow. Now, you can obviously mess with whatever you want in here. I'm going to leave them as is because I think it actually looks pretty good. But for opacity, if you want it to be kind of like darker within like between each piece, then you would crank this up. You can see it gets darker on that one piece. So I'm going to put it back to 35 uh, distance. I wouldn't mess with that because it, you know, you can see it just flies right off the rails there. So I'm going to keep it at that. Same thing for spread. I'm going to leave it at zero. It just looks weird if you do anything else. And then size, same thing. You don't want it to be all spread out like that. So I'm going to keep it at, I think it was at three. For bevel and emboss, I'm going to leave it as well. I think these things are all pretty good. Depth just means that you can make it kind of harsher between each piece. That kind of adds, if you see the, the glow on the outside and the Right now it's the top and the right and the shadows on the bottom and the left because of where I have this, right? So you can change that. If you move it over to here, I know that looks odd. I'm just going to keep it to the top right there. But the more depth you have, the more like you're going to see that it kind of raised up or not. So I'm going to put it back to about 100, what it was. That was fine. And then you can play around with size and soften too. I think it looks pretty good like this. And just click OK. It's going to apply that to all the rest of the pieces. Then just close actions and we'll go back to our layers to mess with some things here. So if you notice what happened in layers, there is now a layer for every single piece here and it has bevel and emboss and drop shadow on it. So if I hide this one, you can see that that's a one up here 
and then A2 is the next one, and it just goes through each piece. So I would suggest clicking on your top piece, sliding all the way down to the bottom, holding Shift, clicking on the very last piece, and then going in here and putting them in a group, put them in a folder. And then I'm just gonna call that pieces. Now, before I do anything else, like taking some of these pieces out, you know, moving them around or whatever, I'm gonna change the background. So Photoshop in this action puts in this kind of gray background. So as I showed you when I hide this, it's just this gray background. So instead, I'm gonna put like a table top behind that. But instead of shrinking down the puzzle, I'm gonna expand the canvas. So I'm gonna go up here to image and then canvas size. And for width and height, I'm gonna make sure to try and keep the three by two aspect ratio. So I'm gonna move this one to 3000 just to make it easy. And I'm gonna make this one 2000. Then I'm gonna click okay. That's gonna expand the canvas. So now if I zoom out, you're gonna see that the puzzle is smaller within that canvas. Then while I'm clicked on this background layer, I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna go file, place embedded, and I just found this on Pexels. I just found this like wooden tabletop image. You can find whatever one you want. I'm just gonna double click on that. It's gonna place it in behind and then I'm just gonna click check. So now at least my puzzle is on a surface. Now, when I go back into my folder of pieces, when I hide a piece to get rid of it, it just looks a little bit better because there's an actual surface behind it. So I'm not actually gonna hide it. I'm just gonna show you that now with your move tool, anything you click on, you can move. So if I wanna take this piece out, I just click on it and I can move this piece out. I would suggest that any piece you move out though, you go command or control T and like rotate it in some capacity so it doesn't look so odd that it's like perfectly lined up but not in place and then just check. So honestly, now just go through and pick whatever pieces you want, just click on them, drag them out, and then Command or Control T, rotate them a little bit, and create whatever kind of look you want. The only thing to consider is that if you take a piece out, so I'm gonna take this one out, and if you try and leave it on the puzzle, see how it went behind? So I'm gonna just drag it down here for now. All of these pieces in order, this is the highest piece in terms of the layers. So that was the one that was up here, A1. This is A2, the next one down. So whatever is the highest up here, that's gonna be mostly to the front. So our layer right down here, this F9 right here in the corner, this is our lowest one. So that one's gonna be behind everything. So I'm gonna move that one out. But if you want that to be above this, you wanna actually put the piece on the puzzle, like sitting kind of right here, then all you have to do is click and drag it above the other pieces. So I'm just gonna drag it right to the top just to make sure it's above every single other piece. Now when I drag it into place, it's over top of the other pieces. And again, command and control T, just don't make it like so perfect. Flip it around, do whatever to make it so it looks like the piece was actually sitting there like kind of thrown on the puzzle or missing still. On a side note, if you wanna select more than one piece but keep them connected as you remove them from the rest of the puzzle, then all you have to do is click on the first one. You can see here it's E1. Then just hold Shift and click on the other ones. So I'm gonna click on this one. You can see now it's E2 is selected as well. I'm gonna hold Shift, click on this one and this one. Those are the four that I wanna keep connected but remove together. And if I slide down here that you can see that they also selected F1 and F2. And then now all I have to do is click on them and I can remove all four of them together. And then again, if you want to rotate them, command or control T and just kind of maneuver them like that to a different spot and click check. Now, the only other thing that I would probably do here, and I should have done this earlier, is to kind of rotate the actual full puzzle so it's not just perfect on this. So to do that, just click on your top puzzle piece. So in this case for me, now it's F9. Go all the way down to the bottom, hold shift, click on your bottom puzzle piece. So in this case, F8, that will select every single piece. Then just go Command or Control T like we did last time. And you can go right to the corner here and just kind of rotate the actual puzzle or move it so it's not exactly in the center. You know, whatever you're gonna do. When you're good, then just click check. The last thing I'm gonna show you really quick is how to change your background here. So I think this is just a little bit too light of a table look for me. 
So I'm gonna close down my folder of the pieces. I'm gonna click on the background, like the table layer. I'm gonna go down here to this little half circle thing, click on it. I'm just gonna add a levels. And within here, I just wanna make it darker. So I'm just gonna slide this one to the right, closer to this mountain, like the start of the mountain. I'm gonna drag this to the right a little bit. This is kind of the mid-tones. I'm gonna bring that over. And then I might bring this one back to kind of darken the whole thing as well. So that just makes, in this case, my puzzle pop a little bit better and obviously changes the look of the wood on the table as well. And then as a final, final thing, I'm gonna add a drop shadow to the entire puzzle. So to do that, just go over to your group, double click to the right, that'll open the layer style menu. I'm just gonna move this over here, maybe slide it up and zoom it in so we can look at this puzzle piece right here to see the difference. So I'm gonna click on the word drop shadow and then I'm just gonna play around with opacity and for me, size. I'm gonna keep these ones pretty low. So I'm just gonna bump the opacity up to like maybe 60%, somewhere around there and the size up to, I don't know, somewhere around 10. This obviously just adds a little bit of depth to the puzzle and makes it a little bit better. So I'm gonna click OK. So again, now looking at the whole puzzle, this is without the drop shadow and this is with it. It's very subtle, but it does make a difference. And that's it. That's how you make a simple puzzle effect in Photoshop using actions. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you next time.